Good. 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 Well, you know, we had a good start in the SEC. I think we played, you know, a little better in the last game. You know, paid better attention to detail. Had more success when we did. Um, and when we didn't, we probably didn't have as much success, but we were very consistent uh, for the most part in how we executed offensively, defensively, and on special teams. Still things that we need to improve on. You know, we need to show that we can sort of build uh, on this and show progress as a team, individually and collectively. Uh, this is a very dangerous team. We're playing in Arkansas. They have a very, very good team coming off a tough loss. Um, so they make a lot of explosive plays. You know, A.J. Jefferson is dual threat wise, big, strong, really good passer. Uh, they got a lot of quarterback runs, uh, which create another gap on defense. And to go with that, they have great play action passes. They make a lot of explosive plays. You know, Sam's done a great job there to me. Uh, they got a, they play with toughness. You know, they run the ball effectively. They stop the run on defense. And the guys play hard. Um, they got a real culture there uh, that shows great intangibles. Um, their defense is good. Uh, so this is a really, really good all-around team. And it's going to take great preparation on our part to go on the road and be able to play the way we need to play against a very good SEC team. How would you characterize the team's offensive identity after four games? Um, you know, I think you build an identity over a season, uh, and we're going to continue to try to do that so that we have balance and we feature the players that we have on our team um, so that they have the best opportunities to be successful. I think there's been times when we've done that extremely well, and there's times that have it, but I, I really can't, you know, get a lot of explosive plays in the last game, which we want to continue to be able to do, to utilize the skill players that we have and run the ball effectively when we need to. So we're still, you know, building on that identity, but I think the players are making really good progress. Michael? After four games of film work, uh, watching Drew Sanders, where have you seen him take his game at Arkansas? Uh, Drew was a good player when he was here. Uh, unfortunate injuries, and he's certainly playing well for them. And you know, it's good to see that he's he, he's done a good job for them. We're we're happy for him and his family. Back over to Charlie. Bryce obviously had a big year for you guys last year, but where have you seen him improve the most from year one as a starter to now? Well, I think the big thing is he's got a lot of new people around him. Uh, and I think that it creates tremendous value for him, as he did in the last game, when he makes it work with the players that we have now. And I think each week we've done a little bit better job of that. And uh, I think to have continued growth in that area is important for him and for us. Welcome, Katie. Coach, what kind of role do off the field staff members like equipment, nutrition, athletic training, field crew, play in the overall success of the program? Well, you can't have success without them, I can tell you that. I think they do. That's one of the things that we have a great team here. Uh, everybody contributes in a really positive way. Our training staff is tops in the country. Medical staff is tops in the country. I think our players believe and trust in those people. We have a great nutrition program for our players uh, that we're constantly trying to get them to take advantage of. Um, you know, the equipment guys, these guys, have to do more to get ready for a game than probably anybody, and it goes pretty much unnoticed uh, by everybody except us. Um, so I, I don't think you can have a great program if you don't have great people in all those support roles. Probably Nick. What would you say about some of the keys to success for the run defense through the first four games? Well, you got to beat blockers on the line of scrimmage, and everybody's got to do their job and fit the runs right. And, you know, so far we've done, done that fairly well, but you know, the challenges in this week's game are going to be far greater than anything we faced at this point um, because they have a really good scheme. Uh, there's a lot of quarterback runs involved in it. So um, it'll take a great week of preparation for us to be able to play the runs well this, this week. Coach, 
go with Carrie in the back. Hi, Coach. Uh, from your experience, I'm curious if there's any benefit or impact to evaluating a team on tape after a loss. Meaning, is there anything that you see after the team loses that you kind of use as you are scout the team, or how do you feel that helps at all? Well, first of all, I don't see their team after they lost. You know, I see the game. I see how they lost. I'm sure they're very disappointed. Uh, and I'm sure that, you know, they'll be upset with the way that, you know, the game ended up, the outcome of the game, whether it was the fumble where they had a chance to go in and score a touchdown, they got returned 98 yards or whatever for a touchdown, which is like a 14-point swing. But... I don't really control how the other team thinks or what they, they do. You know, I think the key for us is to play the best that we can play and you know not allow the other team to get well when they play us because of how we play. I'm sure they've got their goals and aspirations for how they want to play. I was wondering if you and the offensive staff kind of go through at all week by week how the playbook's being kind of incrementally rolled out throughout the season and how you guys manage that. How the what's rolled out? The playbook is kind of incrementally rolled out throughout the season or kind of how you manage you know, what you have in the playbook earlier in the season. Yeah, well, we have a playbook and um, it's really a lot of plays, more plays than we could ever run in a game. And you have to pick and choose what you're trying to do before the season ever starts. These are the weapons, these are the things, these are the the things that we need to be able to go through the season and the players to understand, you know, when we play certain types of teams that do certain things and these things are better against other teams. And then you try to change the presentation uh, each week uh, so that maybe the other team has a more difficult time recognizing what you're doing and what you're trying to do. Uh, but you don't take the whole playbook, nor do you sort of reinvent the wheel every week, right, for what you want to do. Uh, because it's what the players know and it's what they can execute. Uh, I think you tweak it from week to week. You add some things, you do some things that you haven't done in the past couple of weeks. And we do self-scout on ourselves uh, each week. Um, the cumulative of what we've done throughout the season so that we can see if there's some tendencies that we're creating and how we could, you know, maybe break those in you know, future games and future game plans. And yes, I do meet with the offense about that. I meet with them about a game plan. I meet with them about you know the openers that we have in each game. How we're going to start each game. Um, philosophically, how do we want to you know go about attacking the other team? Um, we thought, like in the last game, for example, you know we thought spreading Vanderbilt out and making them play in space would be an advantage for us. So that's what we did. Might not be the case against another team. Tony? Drew Sanders has played more inside linebacker at Alabama, or sorry, at, at Arkansas. Is that a role that you kind of envisioned for him here? And then what does it say about his versatility that he's able to kind of do both? Right. Well, you know, that was probably what we were going to do. Um, but it never worked out. It is what it is. Um, it's good for him that he can play, you know, both positions and uh, that he's doing well. The back. And I just wanted to ask you about KJ Jefferson, uh, just his size and how tough he is in, in coaching or in practice this week. Are you really focusing on wrapping up and tackling and just how dynamic of a threat is he, both as a passer and a runner? Well, I mentioned before what a dynamic player that he is. Um, big, strong guy, hard to tackle, hard to sack, hard to get on the ground, uh, can push the pile and run over people when he runs quarterback runs. Very physical, you know, player. Um, so all those things that you mentioned are certainly things that we want to emphasize this week. But you can't minimize the effectiveness of this guy as a passer. You know, he is really, really good. He's got a strong arm. Uh, throws uh, the deep ball well. And, you know, they make a lot of explosive plays uh, because they run the ball extremely well. They have really good play action passes, but he executes it both ways very, very well. Okay, so two more, Mason and then back. Of course, Kobe Prentice is starting for he's one of your wide receivers, but also number 17, Isaiah Bond, and 19, Kendrick Law, got some time early in last game. Just what have you seen from this freshman wide receiving group that's kind of impressing you, whether in games or in practice? Yeah, well, those guys are talented guys, and 
they're also smart guys that have been able to learn the offense and make you know, really good incremental progress week in and week out. And we knew that those guys were good players when we recruited them. But we also knew that we needed, you know, some of the younger players to be able to develop into roles on the team and give us the kind of depth uh, that we need at the wide receiver position. Uh, so we've been very pleased with the way that has, you know, sort of transpired to this point. Uh, but again, for every position on the team, you know, how they can build on continued improvement will be a real key for us down the road. Finish up in the back. Uh Early on in last week's game, Vanderbilt was having some success with some back shoulder passes. What would you say makes that pass so hard to defend? Well, I, I think that, um, you know, if you you got a guy cut off, which means you're in good position, you probably can defend the long ball because you're in that position. So the quarterback and the receiver throwing it to the back shoulder makes it difficult for the defensive back when he's in good position be able to turn in the guy and play that ball. It's kind of a timing throw, uh, but it's something that we work on quite a bit. Uh, we didn't always play it great in the game, uh, but you got to give some credit. You know, their number 14 is a pretty good player too. And we didn't give them the over-the-top ball, which is probably even more important. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thank you.